So I'll be I'll be moving out of the banking discussion a little bit. There's a, there, there, there's there's a compliance angle for sure, but um, I uh, I really want to talk about a more protocol level uh, play, which is basically what Dust Network is trying to do. And uh, usually the talk is about uh, the state of privacy in DLT. Uh, however, I was advised also by the facilitators here to start with a brief academic demo of what it is that Dusk Network is adding to the blockchain space. Uh, and I will kick off uh, uh, with that. So I'm going to get a little bit technical, but uh, bear with me. And uh, roughly five minutes from now, I'll, uh, I'll kick off the, uh, the normal talk. Dusk Network is a, is a protocol, right? It's a full tech stack, and blockchain is a part of it. And a consensus mechanism is part of a blockchain. Uh, what we're doing with Dust Network is introducing a new consensus mechanism. It's called Segregated Byzantine Agreement, or proof of blind bid to keep it a little bit easier. Segregated Byzantine Agreement is based on Algorand's uh, Byzantine Agreement. It's in the PBFT family of consensus mechanisms, uh, except that we have segregated uh, node transactionality from uh, network intensive tasks like verification, voting, and notarization of blocks. What does this mean in a nutshell? We've taken the stuff that takes a lot of computing power away from all the other stuff, so your blockchain becomes faster and more efficient. I'll give you a very brief uh, run through uh, the cycle in this uh, consensus mechanism. It's important to know for this example that there's roughly two players. First of all, there's a normal node. This node is transactional, that means they perform transactions uh, and they compete for block rewards. The second type of node is called a provisioner. They perform tasks like verification, voting, and notarization, VVN tasks. That's the intensive stuff. They don't perform any transactions. It's basically a lottery system called Sortition. Nodes compete in this Sortition by uh, uh, placing a certain bid, and they will receive a score from the system, basically a lottery ticket. They will then propagate this score to the rest of the network through a gossip setup and reach the verifiers. The verifiers decrypt this score and say, OK, well, Johnny is saying his score is 10, and Billy is saying 12. OK, well, they're both not lying. Uh, 12 is the highest. You get to propose a block. The block is then propagated to the voters. The voters will vote on either this proposed block or a default empty block if they find something wrong with it. Uh, it is then notarized by the notaries, added to the blockchain with all the relevant reward info. The notaries become the verifiers in the next round of consensus and the cycle starts anew. Well, if you didn't get any of that, then there's one or two things to take away from this. One, it's, uh, uh, it, it's scalable, because we only require a subset of nodes to reach consensus. And two, it's uniquely suited for a privacy blockchain. The second interesting thing that we're introducing in Dust Network is something called secure tunnel switching. This is basically our solution for streaming on blockchain. Um, again, we were inspired here by something that you're probably familiar with called the payphone. The payphone works as follows. You enter a coin or a token, and you can call someone for, let's say, a minute. And an operator at the switchboard connects you, and when your minute is almost out and you want to keep talking, you put in another coin, you get another minute, yada, yada, yada. Secure tunnel switching is much the same, and it's a crypto pay-as-you-go mechanism, and it was important to design it like this because solutions that we find relatively clunky, like escrow or smart contracts, which you would currently use to settle things like streaming, uh, don't work very well with privacy. Um, so basically what happens is Alice wants to call Bob. Uh, she pays a dusk coin uh, into what we call a state channel access point. Uh, a garlic routing tunnel is opened to reach Bob. Bob receives communication, and they're happily talking. So far, it's basically the payphone. Um, except what is going to happen when the minute almost runs out and they want to keep communicating, Alice will now put another coin not into the same payphone, but into a second payphone. And a new circuit is created from Alice to Bob. And once these are both open, Bob is going to synchronize these two data streams. And once they are synchronized, the old one is dropped. And this process repeats. So every unit of time, 10, 30, 60 seconds, we are moving through a communication tunnel. Uh, not only 
is this uh, efficient because we're moving through a state channel, we can still settle this on chain regardless of the length of the conversation because we freeze Alice or status on the chain as soon as this commences. But most importantly, it's extremely secure because all of the players in a network are private. We don't have any information about them. Uh, a, a, a bad actor, a malicious node, couldn't really target to intercept any data. Uh, and even if they could get something, they would get an encrypted fragment of a small unit of time worth of communication is basically negligible. Um, so segregated Byzantine agreement, our consensus, and STS, our, our streaming solution, are, are two of the big technical things uh, that Dusk Network brings to the blockchain space. Um, but there's a reason why we went through all the effort of, of, of developing these. And, and, and this springs from the state of, of DLT uh, uh, privacy. So let's dive into the main talk. First, let's establish the basics. So, pardon me. First of all, privacy is, uh, is not something bad, right? We talk about all the scary stuff, terrorism, financing, yada, yada, yada. But privacy is a good thing in many, many cases. Many businesses and individuals rely on it. And the same goes for transparency. It allows for markets to mature. It allows uh, honesty. It means that we're all doing stuff that we can check. Uh, and in our stance is basically that we should view both as forces of good when used in the right proportion. And this leads us to the state of privacy in DLT. Because it's very difficult to decentralize the person or the party that gets to say, ha, something weird happened, now we're going to disclose your data, uh, current blockchains often take the position of a binary stance on privacy. So either we are going fully private, so we're solving this problem by saying, you know, nobody gets to know anything, or we are going fully transparent, so we're solving the problem by saying everybody can see anything. And this obviously brings a few problems. So when we're in a paradigm where everything is fully private, so businesses might like it, or some users might like it, or traders might like it, but regulators will not like it. You know, they will not be able to say, okay, what's going on here is correct, uh, meaning that this market is unlikely to mature. Vice versa, if we're on a fully open ledger, uh, a business might put a small process on it, you might put you know, something relatively unimportant on top of an open ledger, but you're not going to put your legal documents there or your medical documents there or your trade secrets or, or you know, important stuff. Um, so we need to reconcile these two uh, uh, as a pre prerequisite for mass adoption because both the businesses and the users and the regulators need to be happy with a solution in order for real adoption. Uh, and the tricky part is that this is not fixed, right? It doesn't mean that, oh, we'll make it 50-50 and now everyone is happy. This is different per use case, per sector, per business. So why hasn't this been solved yet? So existing consensus mechanisms are often ill-suited for privacy or they have other issues. So proof of work consumes a lot of energy. Uh, proof of stake uh, is tricky with privacy because stakes are often public. Uh, uh, it enriches the rich. It has other issues like uh, attack vectors, like long-range attack. Uh, and existing blockchains cannot adapt enough or they are simply built to do something else. So in the case of Ethereum, we're talking about a fully open ledger. In the case of Monero, uh, they could move to a more hybrid solution that would allow for some auditability, but it would require solutions like uh, a cryptographic accumulator, which requires a trusted ceremony to set up, which I don't see Monero doing. Uh, that being said, uh, segregated Byzantine agreement and Dusk are created specifically to solve this reconciling the need for privacy and the need for transparency. So please don't reframe this as a value uh, judgment that ooh, Monero and ETH are bad and, and Dusk is the best. Uh, we are good at this use case. <laughs> so our solution, flexible privacy. So modern cryptographic tools like the accumulator I just mentioned uh, uh, can enable regulation uh, without actually disclosing data. So what we can say is, okay, everyone that is playing the game is eligible to do so, but we do not know who these people are or how they are transacting, uh, and we don't have to reveal any of this data directly, but that we can prove that it was correct. Um, Thus, network is also not just a blockchain, it's a, it's a full tech stack aimed at privacy. So there's basically three layers. There's an anonymous networking layer that hides your identity, hides your IP, uh, all that kind of stuff. There's things on the wallet level, the, the well-known cryptographic primitives, stealth addresses, ring CT, signatures that will be bulletproof in the future. Uh, and this really helps 
um, creating a whole, a whole ecosystem uh, that works with this reconciliation. And finally, and probably most importantly, DOS Network is a protocol. So it means that DOSC is a coin, not a token. So that means that we can build tokens on top of DOSC. And this is relevant because when I said earlier that uh, you know, the privacy spectrum, that it goes from privacy all the way to transparency, is not fixed, right? So it shouldn't be all or nothing, but we also cannot say, well, then let's make it 50-50. So let's say if you are buying a house, then doesn't matter if you're doing it on Monero because it's going to end up in the cadaster anyway, right? So why, why bother hiding it? It can be completely open. Uh, but if you're buying uh, uh, something more uh, privacy-bound or if you're communicating with your divorce lawyer or you name it, then you want some level of, of privacy. And the, the nice thing about being able to tokenize on top is that for every dApp, every token, every security, every use case, uh, you can configure these settings individually. Well, of course, it's all nice that everyone and anyone can build on top of Dusk, but we're also building it for a reason. Uh, payments, I think, are self-explanatory, and P2P communications, same, and we've already discussed it. The big one, I think, is digital asset transfer. So we're talking tokenized securities, security token offerings, and what we call the XST standard, and that stands for uh, confidential security tokens. Uh, what we aim to do with the XST standard is to create a standard for security token offerings on top of Dusk, like the ERC-20 standard was on top of Ethereum for ICOs. Um, and let's deep dive a little bit into that example. So what's a security token? Well, a digital representation of anything representing a right or something of value or something of ownership. An easy example is a share in a company. We all know shares in companies, and here on the left you can see a company might emit a share because it wants money, because it can invest money and then it can grow. And an investor might want a share in a company because it gives them ownership and therefore dividends and maybe the right to vote or maybe just to speculate. All valid reasons. Um, but let's say we can now make this, these shares, this equity, into a security token. So why is that relevant for business? Well, First of all, they can decentralize just that part of their business, so just their share registry, maybe their dividends, maybe their governance, uh, whilst keeping the rest of the business centralized. And this is a, a, a pretty big deal because uh, the reason why we see so many dApps and so many other stuff failing is because businesses had to decentralize everything and they were not ready for it or the tech was too immature and it's a problem. The second big point is that it's access to new fundraising methods, right? So big corporations could do an IPO, and SMEs could maybe do private equity. But if there's anything we've seen the last year or two, is that probably one of the biggest points of the whole blockchain revolution is this huge appetite for alternative ways of funding. Why is it relevant for you? Well, many people in the crypto or blockchain space are in it because they like the tech, but we cannot discount a very significant portion that's in it to make money. And this is ultimately what will drive adoption. Uh, so you basically uh, uh, get access to a huge new amount of potential investment opportunities that you can now easily perform digitally. And it's liquid. So if you buy private equity uh, right now, for example, a medium-sized business in your town, you go to the notary, you get some shares, but then you basically have to sit on them, maybe five years, maybe 10 years, who knows. But if you build in things like uh, uh, KYC and, and privacy requirements on a token level, and you can ensure that all the players in the game are allowed to be there, then you can also enable that these people can now trade, uh, which means that you've now made a liquid asset class out of small, medium enterprise equity, uh, which means that if you don't have to hold it for so long anymore, the risk tolerance goes way up because you can now change positions. You can sell stuff, you can get rid of stuff, you can buy new stuff. So don't think that equity isn't ready to be uh, tokenized because uh, the risk tolerance will go way up because the liquidity will also go way up. But we need to reconcile. So if I emit $10 million worth of shares and you see BlackRock moving $5 million into my wallet, market's gonna go nuts, right? because we're uh, on an open ledger, uh, the wallets are slowly getting mapped, we see big movements like this, uh, everyone will want to get in, this is what we call market manipulation in a regulated market. And the same works vice versa, so let's say five years after my STO, BlackRock wants to sell, and you see, oh, this money is now moving to a place where it can be sold, everyone starts dumping, 
company goes sour, right? And we, we've seen it this week. You see how Reddit explodes when a Mt. Gox wallet is touched or when a Silk Road wallet is touched. Uh, in a regulated market, this is at best undesirable and often illegal. Uh, so we need to keep this financial side, we need to keep private to prevent market manipulation. But on the asset transfer side, we need transparency, because you need to know that I'm selling it to someone who's of legal age, and maybe in a certain jurisdiction, and there might be other requirements. And we can prove this through uh, cryptographic accumulators and solutions like this to prevent ineligible parties from holding said securities. Um, so the security space is, is really a big one where this reconciliation is key for adoption, and everyone is talking about security tokens, uh, but no one is talking about this very, very basic requirement. Um, to talk a little bit about Dusk, I'll keep this very brief uh, for time, and I think I'm keeping you from, uh, from a break as well. So uh, we've been researching stuff for about a year. Uh, we, we're doing it a bit old school, so if you go on our website, download our white paper, you'll see a formally proven academic paper. Uh, we'll have a DevNet around Christmas and uh, expect mainnet um, early Q2. So if I can leave you with a few, um, a few key takeaways. And then first of all, our stance, uh, which I would uh, hope you uh, adopt after this talk, is that privacy and transparency are both forces of good, and their reconciliation is a prerequisite for any type of mass adoption. The second one is that tokenized securities will prove very, very exciting. They will allow businesses to access new methods of fundraising whilst cherry-picking DLT benefits um, uh, that don't require them to center or decentralize their whole business model. And this, vice versa for users. And finally, to leave you with a thought on Dusk Network, of course, is that uh, the reason why we are building this tech stack with inventions like uh, segregated Byzantine agreement and, and STS is because we want to solve number one and therefore uh, unlock number two. Um, before I wrap up, I have one more thing to say. The, 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 the gentleman at, the, at Bitcoin uh, Wednesday, being the great salesman that they are, uh, asked me to bring something uh, potentially exciting to the stage. Uh, I'm not sure if I can manage, but, uh, but, but hopefully this will do for some of you. Uh, we've just closed a, uh, a private seed round that will help uh, Dusk Network uh, develop for the next year, year and a half to come. Uh, we have a very small uh, allocation uh, uh, reserved on the seed terms for, for anyone here tonight who can pass, obviously, KYC AML. I know there's banking people here. Um, you need to be eligible, uh, but you can come to me after the talk or ideally uh, email the address here. And if there's any interest, I'll try to be honest in uh, dividing it amongst eligible people. Thank you. Mm. I should I should just clarify that is um, uh, uh, that that Dusk is given permission to make this offer, yes. <laughs> but it's not at my requ request. So we are not um, uh, due to the to due to the um, the regulators in this country. We're not able to take any kind of position on anything that you see here. So <laughs> right, we and and we do not. So. Um, you you will you will if you go to enough Bitcoin Wednesdays you will see every you know everything under the sun from from the the most um, uh, say uh, alt of the alts to to be diplomatic to 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 the most uh, exciting and we have had a, a a lot of very exciting projects including Ethereum uh, uh, co-founders and so on so you have to do your own diligi due diligence but here we have. The, one of the, the co-founders to ask your questions and you can look them straight in the eye. And so uh, everyone can, uh, can feel free to, to make offers and say, you know, <laughs> deals or, uh, you know, however, however they want. And uh, I will say that if, if any, anything like that is done um, here tonight, it would be probably the first time that it's been done on the premises of Vabian Amro. So anyway, having said that, um, I would like to start with a quick question. We only have time for a couple, and then we, we need to take a quick break. Um, this is highly experimental, what you are doing, is yeah. it not? Can you tell us how far along are you? What is actually real in, in this, and what, what do we still have to honestly say is experimental, innovative, and still vaporware? Um, well, Dust Network uses even the, 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 the tech that we consider 
proven, things like garlic routing or, or, or the, the test and done by Algorand, uh, even that is in a normal market considered experimental. We are already Bitcoin trying to, is too. Uh, we're already trying to build on top of that, right? Algorand isn't even at a mainnet yet. Uh, so I would say it's extremely early stage. Uh, there's a lot of formal academic proof on these things. Their uh, development has started. Uh, we are not releasing uh, code publicly per commit. Uh, we're releasing it in batches because we work with research partners and they have reputations. Uh, however, it will all be open source in the end. Like I said, uh, we're aiming for DevNet around Christmas and you'll see the first, let's say, two to three big batches of code outlining the whole skeleton uh, before then. Oh. So we have time for a couple of very quick questions. Hey, thanks for the presentation. I uh, could ask you, like, if I, understand, uh, if I understand correctly, of course, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, if, we, if we compare Dusk with, let's say, R3 Corda, uh, and you're targeting the same, the same businesses, if, well, consortium uh, businesses, if I, if I understand right. Like, they're also working on close to zero uh, bulletproof, um, mm. zero knowledge uh, bulletproofs. And so on, what is what Dusk's, what Dusk bring, brings more? Or how do you think uh, you're going to develop it, having in mind that there's already a, a player in that field already having, like, I guess, 150, 170 um, partnerships with the big financials? Sure. Um, <laughs> well, Corda uh, aims at a lot of the big players, right? So this is a consortium filled with the big multinationals, and uh, that's not really our target market. So we're really looking to... Uh, help the section of businesses that wouldn't be eligible to access an IPO, for example, uh, to, to access these, these fundraising methods. Um, we also think that when you look at the blockchain on a technical side, there's going to be individual parts of it, like you know, uh, uh, the zero knowledge components you mentioned, uh, bulletproof, that are going to be at best on par with other solutions. I'm not going to pretend we'll be the best in every subcomponent of our stack, right? Uh, but I think overall, when we're looking at our uh, uh, consensus mechanism and a few key parts in the tech stack, that this will, uh, does network will allow you to preserve uh, much more of your privacy and in a flexible way uh, that I haven't seen uh, a Corda match yet. Uh, however, I'm happy to, uh, to look into the dirty details and uh, can probably do a post on it and why, uh, <laughs> why we're uh, extremely different. Who has the last question? All right, so um, I'm sure everyone here is familiar with Andreas, uh, and I'm sure you are too, like Andreas Antonopoulos, the Bitcoin speaker. Uh, and one of the things he always mentions is that um, privacy is something that either everyone has it or no one does. Because if you have sort of a s shared space, like if you have a split between things that are private and things that are not, you have this sort of border or borderline that you have to cross. And whenever you use a private transaction or a private uh, interaction only to do something that is like shady or whatever, um, at some point you have to cross that, that line. Uh, and it's still really easy to measure or to check whoever is doing sort of private things. Uh, and and it, it makes privacy really difficult. So how, how are you dealing with that uh, with, with your network? Like how do you reconcile both, like making sure that everything is private by default, but then also having these sort of open, this open space? Right, um, it's a tricky question, <laughs> first of all. Uh, um, one of the big things is, uh, is, the, is the accumulators we're working with, right? So uh, cryptographic accumulator basically uh, you, you can uh, commit a player into or basically whitelist certain people that have, for example, been through a KYC. They enter a, a pool of people that can then, for example, perform completely private transactions. So you can see it as a bit of a sub-network where everything is, is private. Uh, however, this accumulator can, can prove that certain steps were taken to allow admission. So that's really where you would cater off the, the part that says, okay, you know, we, we don't know what's happening within the game, the DAP, the use case, whatever, but we know they're all 18 plus and we know they're all from this country and we know, you know, A, B, C, D. That's a way of doing it. Um, another, an, another way is to uh, look into the use case and, and, and see 
uh, if there's certain kind of uh, yeah, process flows, if you will, uh, that can be fully one or the other. So if you're, uh, let's say, buying a share, then you want the financial transaction to, for example, be completely private, but the asset ownership transfer could, for example, be completely transparent. Uh, and this, uh, this absolves some of the issues uh, around what you're describing. Uh, however, it is, a, it is a definitely uh, an, an ongoing challenge. Um, we, have, uh, we have very strong hopes for, uh, of course, our, our, our technical team uh, developing what's best in the space right now, but uh, I also won't pretend that we have the all-knowing solution for you today. All right. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem.